Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, looking back at uh, Saturday, uh, it was great to get uh, so many guys into the game. Uh, we played a lot of players, and there's nothing better than getting the experience of game reps uh, and a lot, a lot of things to learn, uh, a lot of things to, to teach from. Uh, we, we definitely played hard. Um, I thought we played physical, some technique things in all phases, offense, defense, and special teams we need to get better at and uh, spend a little time on that yesterday. And then we'll, we'll take some time over the next couple of padded practices to uh, work on some more technique things that um, we've got to shore up a little bit. But I was pleased with the way uh, uh, the guys came out and, and, and played hard this first game. And now we got to turn the attention to uh, Troy, really good Troy team, uh, veteran team um, that uh, has won an awful lot of ball games, and uh, it'll be a great challenge for us uh, come Saturday. Pretty seasoned for being as young as they were. Uh, I, their errors were more technique errors and not a, not a lot of assignment errors, which is really encouraging that they're paying attention and um, learning from the older guys. Now it's just, you know, maybe it's block destruction, maybe it's where their hand placements are at, whatever it may be. But um, uh, I don't think the stage was too big for them as far as, you know, making getting the call and executing the call. Yeah, we'll once again play it week by week. Um, I will tell you that that Avery and Jake split a lot of the two reps during the week. I don't know two games are the same, but are there any lessons you can take away from previous losses you've had against Arkansas State, Tulane, that you can apply now to kind of a similar team coming in? No, no, not not really. Uh, it. it same thing we've we talk about every week, you know. You got to prepare um, Monday through Friday to give yourself a chance to be successful on Saturday. And any team can beat you. Uh, I don't care what level they're at. If, if you don't have your A game, and that's not just physically, that's mentally, that's emotionally. Um, this team is a really good football team and um, could beat a lot of Power Five, Group of Five, whatever you want to say beat a lot of teams in general because of, of their depth and because of their ability. So for us, it's it's still about us. We have to take care of making sure that we're prepared, um, not only schematically for the things we're going to see, but emotionally and physically as well. You got a closer look at the game on rewatch. Was there anything that jumped out at you that you didn't see initially that you said, hey, we really did a good job at this? Um, no, I mean it was just it was it was a solid effort. You know, there's some things that uh, um, you know we need to sustain and get off blocks better offensively and defensively. Our perimeter run, we feel like we need to sustain blocks better, and that's everybody. That's not just wideouts. That's tight ends. That's old linemen that are pulling, and then we need to be able to get off blocks in the perimeter. Those are the two things that I saw, and, and a lot of those were I'm in the right spot, but had poor technique. I just want to ask some of you guys. Looked like they had some pretty good uh, celebration. Ready to go for that game after they made big plays? Were there any one of them that uh, was your favorite? I didn't know about a lot of them, and I still probably don't know, and I probably don't care to know about them. Um, the only one that jumped out at me just because I was in with the defensive guys was was Dukes um, uh, casting the, the the rod and reel with fishing. That was the only one that I saw, and so uh, if there was other ones, I'm sure somebody will tell me about them later. You've been with a couple of highly successful programs. Is there a way to classify a team that's won 12 straight and the confidence that they must carry? Oh, just belief and, and confidence like you hit on with, with just feeling they're always going to win. That When you have success, um, you feel like you're going to find a way to win. And they won a number of close games last year. And um, so when you get into a fourth quarter game with these guys, uh, which I firmly believe is going to be a four quarter game, um, these guys are going to really believe that they can win because they've done it before. Uh, when they have a, a veteran quarterback that's played a ton of football, so he's not, the moment's not going to be too big for him. The stage is and all those things because he's been been in big environments and he's played big in big games. And then the amount of guys they have back on defense, um, they'll be ready for for what our environment uh, they face. What is the versatility that the two back system gives you guys? Um, 
The fact that you don't know which way the run could go for starters, uh, you know, just and they both can run, they both can can block really well. I, they're both good receivers out of the backfield. There's some things that we are going to clean up with both those guys as far as some route running, but uh, um, you know, just the fact that you can't say well it's going to go to this way or going to go that way because they both could lead for each other, and then um, you know, it gives us more things in the pass game probably as much as anything. Status of Jake Clifton going into this week? Yeah, it'd be doubtful for Jake this week. Um, that's why we didn't list him on the depth chart. Um, be a, a long shot, but I doubt it. Not only did Cooper BB play both guard and tackle, but he switched sides of the offensive line. Yeah. Just how difficult is that and how impressive was it for him to It's do? really impressive. You know, it's like Jake Clifton playing Sam, Mike, and Will. Uh, it, it's, it's really hard to do. It just goes to show you uh, somebody that's been in the program that um, – um, just understands how all five have to work as one, and he listens. He pays attention. He's got the skill set to do a lot. You know, it helped us that he played left tackle for a whole season. Um, but uh, with Duff down, it just it opens up so many more things because we have more interior guys right now. Uh, we do get John Pastore's missed an awful lot of time in fall camp. Um, he was cleared to come back to activity this week, which. Whether or not he's going to be ready to play this week, time will tell. But it gives us another uh, body there with depth. Have you ever had someone like Cooper that can do that at that level and not miss a beat? I, I think the key is you know, we've had some swing guys, but to do it at the high level. I mean, he could be an all-conference player at, at many spots on the offensive line. And, you know, it's going to allow us to stay fresh with some of the other players and you know, you, you want Coop in the game. And so if there's ways for us to get Hadley and TP in the game together, then he's got to go play tackle. And that's something that uh, uh, Riles is going to continue to uh, just um, put different guys out there and make sure that they mesh all well together. What about Troy impresses you the most? Well, just in the first game, um, running back, uh, he had some big home runs. Um, just his style of running. I mean, he's a physical runner. He's uh, got great vision, great quickness. Um, quarterback, like I said, seasoned guy, uh, puts the ball on the money. Um, defensively, I think they're uh, very aggressive. Um, they tackle well. They're opportunistic. I mean, that was from that first game. Just, you know, last year, just uh, – and I know there was a number of kids that maybe not on their roster, same as ours, just uh, – always feel like they're going to find a way to win the game. I mean, that's a sign of, uh, of a culture that uh, um, expects to win, not hopes to win. And then is, is Keegan trending towards being able to play? Yeah, we'll find out this week. He um, did some limited things uh, yesterday, um, and so we'll just have to play it as the week goes. Speaking of wide receivers, after game one without Keegan, what did the uh, depth of that position prove to you? I was pleased. You know, Jaden Jackson came in uh, and played really well. He blocked exceptionally well, which is kind of an underrated stat that uh, he did a really good job uh, blocking at the point of attack um, and then caught the big ball uh, on the post route. Uh, RJ was what I expected RJ to be because uh, I've seen it all through fall camp as as a guy that can be an, a number one receiver. Um, Phil, I thought, played uh, uh, well. I was excited to get the young guys uh, in there in Spivey um, and Brown. And then Seth will get pushed back into that rotation a little bit. He was banged up, played just on special teams. He'll get pushed into the rotation now as well. Coach, when you think of Uso, what's the first thing that comes to mind? His smile, honestly. I mean, kid loves to play, and um, he's a he's a a really good football player. It's it's fun to see how he's matured and how he's such a great teammate. How excited he was for Damian. How excited he was for any of the defensive linemen that make a play, uh, and very unselfish. You know, wants to play, but wants uh, wants what's best for the team. And uh, I've just seen him mature as a person so much. Um, you know, I credit Coach Tui. Uh, I credit his teammates. I credit a guy like Eli Huggins that helped him along the way. But uh, um, make no no doubt when when Uso was in the game that that 
pile move the other way, and, and, and he can penetrate, and I just don't think you're going to single him a whole lot. If you do, we hope you do because he's, uh, um, he's a man in there. Here's a guy that his high school, he played with no stadium stands. Yep. Nothing out there, just kind of in dirt. He goes to Garden City. How did how did Tui find find him, and what were your first impressions of him? Well, uh, recruiting staff did a great job too. Taylor Bratt and his staff, you know, just knowing the Kansas Junior Colleges so well, and then um, Tui just having a connection uh, with him from the island. Uh, a, a lot of different uh, um, common people that they both knew, and you know, we just kept building the relationship with him. Uh, and then when we brought him here, it's like a lot of guys in their first year from junior college, it's difficult because it's a big transition um, from playing at Garden City to playing here. And, and he struggled a little bit to start with, um, but we hung with him. He hung with us. He got better and better as the season went along. He got to learn from a from an All-American type player in Eli. And, uh, you know, rather than, you know, being upset that he wasn't playing, took more ownership saying I've got to do these things so I can be more dominant and uh, just watching what he did all last fall and probably more importantly what he did this uh, winter spring and summer to prepare his his body for uh, a long grind of a big 12 season at this stage of his career what do, what do you guys say to Will Howard when he makes a mistake like he did early in the night game um, you know you don't say a lot to Will he got hit on the play and I I he was going to try to knife one in to, to send it, and he got hit, and the ball fluttered on him. So, um, you know that that um, you know maybe take take the easy one, but he didn't know he was going to get hit either. His eyes are downfield, so you don't really say a whole lot to Will. Will Will's his biggest critic. Will's so hard on himself if he makes a mistake. That it could be a mistake that looks like a big one, like that one, or. Um, if he misses a, a throw that he thinks he should make or misses a check he thinks he should make. Um, you know, Will is such a perfectionist that, um, you know, it's just, hey, what'd you see? And, and uh, talk about it. But that one was tough to blame him. And with Trayshawn, he obviously has a lot of skills and versatile areas. Do you feel like you've got a good grasp of where he can help this offense the most yet? Um, I think we're still learning, actually. Uh, as he gets better and better learning our offense, I think he's comfortable outside the perimeter, uh, and he showed that, where he's gaining more and more confidences in between the tackles. Because I think he, and you can see, he can be a really good start and stop, slashing type runner, uh, great vision, great quickness, but he just needs to see more of those plays. And part of that is practice time. You know, when you don't have, a, when you don't have spring ball and you're thrown into the mix in, in fall camp, you know, we're splitting a lot of those reps because we're not, you know, we have three or four tailbacks on each field when we do our double rep stuff. He's not taking every rep. So I, I know he's going to improve um, just with his vision and understanding how the blocks are being made. I'll ask you a couple if you don't mind. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm curious as to, I think we all had a pretty good sense of what VJ and Jacob would be and, and Kobe for that matter. But the rest of the guys that were in there in the secondary, can you give us a sense of how they did in week one? Yeah, uh, Jacob Parrish I thought was really good. I thought number one was a was an excellent receiver that could have played on, that can play on a lot of Big 12 teams. I thought he did a really good job on him. I thought Will Lee for his first game of Power 5 played really well. I thought Keenan Garber played really well for his first game uh, as, as a – significant tr contributor where it wasn't thrown in the mix as a wide receiver the week before. Uh, I thought Colby McAllister and Jordan Wright did some good things. I thought Jack Fabris came in. He just needs to keep learning what we're doing, but he, he came in and made a great open field tackle. So um, we just need to keep giving those guys reps. That's part of the reason, like, Today we'll do some twos versus twos, just K-State versus K-State to keep working some of the base uh, base fundamentals of what we do offensively and defensively because we're going to need those guys. Now it's going to help a bunch that we're going to get Siegel back uh, this week, so we're not going to have to play those guys as many uh, snaps, but you'll probably see them more on special teams. And then on Chris Tennant, um, I always have wondered things like this. You know, He started last year pretty strong and then kind of hit a wall. Is there anything going through that that helps him moving forward? Yeah, I think the the fact that kickers and punters, you probably got to treat a little bit more like pitchers. How much can you kick? How much can you do those things? How much stress? It's a when you 
kick off that many times, that's a lot of stress on the leg. So we, we have to – and then he had a 50-yarder of, of – um, maybe cutting a day out of it for him and not kicking him. Today we'll kick him, but we probably won't mess with him on Wednesday at all. Uh, and yesterday he just kicked uh, some PATs. So just trying to find the balance for him of staying sharp but not wearing himself out. And that sometimes takes time. And I think we learned some things last year. That's part of the reason we were a little fearful of giving Ty all three but that was about a six-game stretch, and we thought he could probably handle that. I think that's really difficult when you're talking about a 12-game stretch when you th- throw the amount of practice reps you have on there, too. So we have him a little bit on a pitch count. Coach, back to Will for a second. In terms of, let's say, the, the intermediate or middle passing game and the downfield passing game, when did you really start to see him take strides in, in both of those areas? Yeah, I would have said spring of, of 22 when Adrian didn't came in here and didn't uh, participate, and he took all the reps of the ones and then um, just continued to elevate from there to the summer to the fall of, of putting it. I think last week was a great example of you know throwing the ball to either RJ or Phil moving forward you know, so that they could – catch a curl, catch a hitch, and get vertical um, and giving them good ball placement so they could catch it and gain some yards. I thought we were really good with our receivers of getting north and south after a catch on third and eight, second and eight, and getting first downs. And, and a big part of that is timing and ball placement. And I think he's been – you know, you, you saw that last year with some of the you know, routes we threw to Senate you know, where he would throw it on a back shoulder so Ben didn't get hit or throw it between defenders. I saw that again this past Saturday when we threw the one to Ben uh, on the sideline, you know, before the defender could get there. Uh, It's just nonstop timing, and that's why it's so important that we practice at full speed, you know, with tight ends, running backs, receivers, so that the quarterback can get that timing um, and and make sure that it is, you know, it's all rhythmic when it comes to the passing game answered what I was going to ask you next was to me maybe the number was two but were there any passes that he made last week that he could not or would not have made last year I I don't believe so Um, just you know seeing that those passes were completed last year with confidence I think just had him so much more capable and ready to to answer the bell this year Um, and uh uh, not fear putting it in those spots. And a lot of that is, you know, just every rep you get, every time you're out there, you, you're seeing more and more pictures of the defense of, man, I've got to keep that safety over here, and then I can flip my eyes back and throw it here. Those are the things I think he's improving on. How did you evaluate the play of your specifically backup linebackers during Saturday? Um, really well. Uh, a lot of those are ones we talked about. Uh, early on in the press conference of young players that just need technique work, whether it was um, Toby, uh, Austin Romaine, Asa, Bo Palmer, um, just needing more and more reps um, so that their technique and block destruction continues to improve and they hit their fits with with good speed and tempo um, because they're in the right spot. And so that's a credit to uh, Coach Standard of making sure those guys know what they're doing now they got to cut it loose like you saw Austin Moore. When he sees it, man, he goes. When Daniel Green sees it, he goes. And there's just that split second where we're still hesitating, which I understand for the younger players because they've got to see it. But as more as the more you see those pictures, um, the more you can hit that with confidence. And uh, that's what I'm excited about. These are all young players that uh, – you know, didn't have mental errors, didn't line up in the wrong gap, didn't understand the checker adjustment. Those guys knew it all, and now they just need that that game experience. I want to ask you about the backup quarterback situation. Can we read anything into the fact that uh, Avery came on first, or was it more a chance to give him an extended? The biggest thing was a chance to have him play, you know, and have him – um, not come in and it's the last series of the game and hand it off three times, and then you say that cost him one of his four games. But I'll caution everybody, we thought the same thing with Will Howard, and all of a sudden he plays six or seven games. And that's why we wanted to make sure we got a really good um, extensive look so that um, we hope nothing happens. 
But if something does, it's not like, well, we've played him and handed it off for two plays. Now let's throw him in a game against Baylor, TCU, Texas Tech, whatever it may be. And that's why we did it that way. Um, and this Friday – and the other thing is Jake missed about a week of practice because he was nicked up. Jake's back healthy, which we're excited about because it gives us another option. We'll keep evaluated, in a, evaluated on a week-to-week -week basis. And same thing with – with all the true freshmen you played, the fact that you had a lead and had a chance to get yep. them in was. We'll see what happens the next week to the next week. But you need those game reps if you can get them because you don't know when you're going to have to have them. And you don't want that have to have them be the first real experience um, of playing not just special team snaps, but offense and defensive snaps. Will talked about last week or a couple weeks ago about when he makes a mistake now that used to really get to him that yep. he's handles that better have you seen seen that from him where he doesn't it, get down after yeah you got to flush it pretty fast not only that but you know I, I, I you can't look at the scoreboard and say oh i should have thrown it because we're trying to get the signal in because the one thing I did like was the tempo of our offense. We got back on the ball and did some things really quickly and caught them off guard. And if you're looking to see should I have done something or finding the replay, you're probably costing yourself four or five seconds and giving a defense a chance to align. And so we did a lot of different um, cadences, so to speak, and a lot of different tempos on offense. And, and Will realizes that whatever that last play was, i got to move on and get ready to go to the next one. There was a little bit of concern about the D-line with uh, Eli going and Felix uh, leaving for the draft. Uh, how did you think they did on uh, Saturday? I thought they did really well. Um, Mott played an exceptional game. He was our defensive end of the game. Um, Uso was our D-tackle of the game. I thought Khalid did what I thought he was going to do with a big-time uh, sack in there. Uh, we played an awful lot of players in there. Um, that I thought Stuff made a couple of really good plays, just run into the football. Um, same with Nate. I mean, it's just it, it, we have a lot of depth there, and if we can keep that depth so that we keep the snap count uh, to a manageable amount so that they can play Mach 1 every snap, that's what we're looking for.